They're actually looking like they're about to spawn again in the next week or so. You'll probably see here the difference in the quantity that I have of Le Lupi now. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're gonna be doing my July 2022 fish room update tour. So let's get into this week's video. So the first tank I'm showing you this month is my Neal Amprologus Le Lupi breeding pair. So you can see the pair on the right of the frame here. They're actually looking like they're about to spawn again in the next week or so. And you can see the free swimming fry on the left here. Now this tank isn't the cleanest tank in the world and that's because I let the algae bloom in this aquarium on the glass. You can see the fry on the left pane of glass and some on the right feeding off the algae. It's fantastic food for the fry uh, and they're feeding off the algae obviously and the microorganisms that are living in that algae. So it's a great source of food for these particular fry. Now, you can see the breeding pair in the bottom right corner of this frame of the tank, and they're looking like they're gonna spawn again. Unfortunately, by the time this breeding pair spawn again, these fry will just be about the right size to wheat that younger spawn, which is obviously unfortunate, but I need to let nature run its course. These fry are far too small for me to take out of this aquarium without pulling obviously all the rocks out of the tank and then uh, disrupting the pair's bond, which will then in turn mean that the female will probably get bashed by the male. So I just let nature run its course. Hopefully the female can protect the new spawn. She sometimes does, she sometimes doesn't. Sometimes she doesn't recognize the new spawn is under threat from the older fry uh, and the older fry get to the spawn and eat them. Sometimes she does defend the older fry from the new spawn. So it just depends on how the female's instinct works uh, over the next few weeks with that newer spawn. And hopefully she obviously will protect that new spawn, but I just let nature run its course. We'll see what happens. Uh, I don't really like to interfere too much with the breeding pair when they have fry this young, especially when they have this many fry in the tank. And uh, just again, let nature run its course. We see how it goes. Uh, I don't want to disrupt the pair and uh, cause them too much stress. Uh, the male has actually been attacking the female for the last day or two, uh, but they've pretty much made up and uh, their bond has formed again. As you can see, they're courting in the front of the tank at the moment. So that's really good. I'm pleased about that. And as you can see, the fry are doing really well. There are a load of fry in this aquarium. Uh, I will pop in some live microworms in the tank just so you can see all the fry come up into the water column. Obviously there are some fry in the water column and a lot feeding off the algae on the sides of the tank, uh, but there are a lot more. So I'll just pop in some live microworms now. And hopefully that will bring more into the water column. It's gonna probably scare the parents. So I'm just dumping the lid of the microworm culture into the aquarium and you should see the microworms disperse into the water. And in a few minutes, more fry will come into the water column now and start feasting on the live microworms that are in the water column. As you can see now, this breeding pair, if you've been on my channel for a while, uh, you would recognize them by now because I show them frequently. You'll know how well they have done for me uh, in, with the, in this fish room. I've spawned hundreds, if not a few thousand of their fry and managed to sell a lot of them off uh, to aquarium shops around Australia through my wholesaler. So I'm really proud of this pair. I love them. One of my favorite fish in this whole uh, fish room. And as you can see, there are a ton of fry in this aquarium. Really pleased about that. It's probably their largest spawn to date. And yeah, I can't be happier with this breeding pair. And speaking of Neolamprologus Le Lupi, thought I'd show you the great aquarium that I've got. Uh, you would have seen this tank last month. And you can probably see here the difference in the quantity that I have of Le Lupi now. Obviously, I still have a few in here. Um, I'm estimating around 50 to 60. Uh, but I recently sold about 200 to the wholesaler, so I'm really pleased about that. And they get shipped Australia-wide. So if you want some Neolamprologus Le Lupi, be sure to ask your local aquarium store for stock from Aquatic Solutions. They're the wholesaler. They will be able to contact that wholesaler and buy my Le Lupi for you. 
So uh, that is how it works. Uh, I don't ship directly to any of you guys. So if you want my fish, I suggest you contact your local fish store again and ask for stock from Aquatic Solutions and you'll end up with some of my quality Neil Emperor Logos Lay These guys obviously will get sold off over the next month or so as well. They're about oh, two inches, some of them, some of them around the inch mark. A uh, range of sizes, a range of spawns, obviously. And if, in case you didn't know already, I have two breeding pairs of Neil Emperor Logos Lay in my fish room. So hence the different sizes in the Lay that you see in this grout aquarium. Also in here, are uh, about 20 albino bristlenose catfish, the short fin variety. They help me keep the tank clean. They've been doing a great job of it. As you can see, the tank is bare bottom. I like to keep bare bottom tanks because it's a lot easier to clean bare bottom tanks than having a substrate in here. Yes, a substrate would look better, but this is a grow out tank. So that's why I just keep them bare bottom. The other thing is that the tank is resting on styrofoam. That styrofoam is bright white. That reflects light back up at the Leilupi and that prevents them from darkening. So if you have Leilupi, loopy they're one of the fish that could darken up to match their surroundings so if you have very dark substrate uh, with lay loopy they will tend to darken up over time if you have them over light substrate or something bright that will help them keep their bright yellow coloration yeah guys just want to show you this tank uh, i love it when it's fully stocked the lay loopy obviously there are still a lot in here but nowhere near as many that i had last month so the next tank i'm showing you guys is a four foot aquarium that's two foot wide by two foot deep I only have two of these aquariums in the fish room, so it's one of my largest tanks in here. Now, currently, it's only stocked with a breeding pair of Gelidochromus regani, and they're fried. They actually have two spawns of fry in this tank, and they're doing really well. However, the last time I would have showed you this tank, it also housed some Kawanga Golds, the only Malawi cichlid I had in the fish room, and it was my breeding colony. Now, I have another cousin, not my cousin Adam, who's frequently on my YouTube channel, another cousin who is actually into keeping fish and particularly Lake Malawi cichlids. He loves them. He was telling me he wanted to get some Kawanga Golds, so I thought, why not? I'll give him my breeding colony because I wanted to, you know, set him up really well. So he's taken the 10 fish that I had, uh, gave them to him, and hopefully he'll get some successful spawns off them. He's got one eight foot aquarium and they're doing fantastically in there. They're absolutely loving it. Now, plans for this aquarium. These guys, the breeding pair, obviously gonna go out of this tank. They're gonna go into their own two foot aquarium to breed in there. The fry will obviously go into a grow out tank and they get sold off at my cichlid club or to my wholesaler. So again, like my Neil Emperor Logos Lupi, I actually have two breeding pairs of Gelidochromus regani. Now I don't necessarily need two breeding pairs of both of those species of fish. And actually I don't want two breeding pairs of those fish. So I'll possibly get rid of one of the breeding pairs of each of those species, just so I can keep something else and have some free tanks for other fry that I rather breed, but I don't need necessarily two breeding pairs of each species. I've already got two breeding pairs of Calvus, the white variety and the black variety. And like I said, I've got two breeding pairs of Neil Emperor Logos Lupi and two breeding pairs of Gelidochromus regani, and I don't need two breeding pairs of both those species. So I'll most likely get rid of one of those breeding pairs each. However, yeah, these guys are loving the tank, uh, all that swimming space for them. As you can see, they basically just hug the rock work and the substrate. They don't really swim into the open water. So this tank is a little bit of a waste for these guys at the moment, but they won't be in here for long. What will go in here though, are I'm thinking my Fursifer Risha. The five that I have, they will love the open water. Uh, they'll go fantastic in here. And I possibly also could keep the breeding pair of Regani in here. Their diet is kind of similar to the Fursifer Risha being more of a vegetarian diet. The Regani like to eat algae, they graze off a lot of algae. Uh, and in the wild, they actually eat sponges, freshwater sponges. However, they do like a little bit of protein in their diet. And Fursifer Risha, again, uh, are basically veggie eaters. Uh, however, they do have a little bit more protein in their diet than say Trophius species. So uh, that might be okay, but we'll see how we go. Uh, obviously, I don't wanna just keep the Fursifer Risha in the tank by themselves. Having something on the substrate uh, will help the guys, the Fursifer Risha having some other fish in there, such as like a type of dither fish. 
just so they don't feel like they're the only ones in the tank and then uh, get scared and then um, yeah, keep them out in the open if they have other fish swimming around with them. But we see how it goes. They do get quite large, so I'm sure once they are large enough, they'll feel comfortable in the tank, whether they're by themselves or with another species in the aquarium. But for the time being, they're pushing about the three inch size at the moment, so we'll see how it goes. So there you have it guys, my July 2022 fish room update tour. Really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, comment, and consider subscribing to my channel. I really would appreciate it. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.